it is five past seven. I've been up since about six-ish. I do wish. I'm on my second coffee. It uh, didn't get back to you last night. After pitching up and then going to pull for something to eat because when we got back, got showered, got laid in bed now we're just gone. I'm absolutely knackered last night, we're ready for that sleep. So yeah, that's why I didn't get back to you last night. But yeah, we're up this morning, like I say, second coffee, I'll go five past seven. I'm going to try and get uh, packed down a little bit earlier this morning. There we are. We know about this section of the uh, route that's closed off between Dalston and Cummerston. So we were talking to a few people last night about it and apparently there is a little diversion in place. Not sure what it consists of and everything but there's plenty of people been messaging on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. Talking about different routes and different ways and catch bus, do this, do that, but we're here to walk it, so that's what we're planning on doing. So, yeah, I'm gonna get this uh, cup of coffee, start making a, well, make a start and packing down, should I say, and then we'll uh, be getting off as early as we can this morning. Right then, well, it's just gone 8 o'clock, we're all packed up. Paul's just gonna chuck his bag on his back. Quarter past eight, all the other thereabouts. Like, like I keep saying, I know we're on a campsite, but leave no trace as always. See, we've got about 15 or 14 miles to do today. Like I was saying earlier, when we're getting to uh, Dalston, this uh, Dalston Cummersdale little detour thing, we're going to uh, assess that when we get there, see what crack is with that. We might end up walking road where you, well, I think we might end up with about three and a half, four a mile road to do, so road walking so anyway we'll see you when we get there so yeah we're gonna get cracking on day five get this last leg done let's get it on you can see right up to where we come from yesterday that's high pike up there right up there that's uh towards back end of that day coming down off there it was i know it's all downhill from there but it was a bit of a slog that coming down hill takes a lot more out on you than what you think it does when you're doing these long distance trails. So that's one of the first way markers that we've seen in quite a while. Especially coming over hills and when we got down into sort of top end of Colbert village. There were one in there so this sort of last couple of days have been quite sparse really but then again when you're up in hills and that there's other than a few gates here and there there's not many places to put them but yeah we've not really seen a lot of them so we have been sort of having to be wary and take note of routes on, on map and stuff and you know sort of keep his eye on the route but yeah that's the first one of this morning that's the way so we're just passing a little section through these woodlands nice little bit and we've just dropped down to uh, the actual Colbeck river just here it's a nice little spot just here Perhaps a little bit rough light, but as you can see, but yeah, it's a nice little stretch of river just here. Might see a few dippers about, maybe some kingfisher, you never know. Just walking through this stretch of woodland now, and there's uh, wild garlic. You can still smell it, it's not quite as pungent as what it's been over last month. I so saw in a lot of places I've walked, but it's still nice to smell it, even though it's at the sort of back end of its growth. We're passing a really nice stretch at the minute, following this river Coldo along. As you can see, it's a, a lovely stretch of river. This but we are sort of back into farming land, agricultural land. We've passed through a couple of farms. There's been, you know, we've encountered cattle and cows and sheep and everything. But 
you know, it's got, the, this type of land has got its own beauty. I mean, as you can see, it's not exactly an eyesore, is it? It's, it's beautiful. We've left the mountains and the hills behind. We're passing through this type of countryside, if you want. And it's got its own beauty, its own nature. There's, there's swallows or house martins flying about, catching flies on wing. And, I mean, look at this, it's absolutely beautiful. So as much as the attraction of the hills and mountains have got and a little bit of countryside stuff like this, it's just as beautiful. As I was saying, a bit further back up here, it's a lovely stretch. This we're still following River Cold You. We, we do follow this for quite a few miles, to be fair. I think it was something like a four or five mile stretch on here, somewhere around here. But as I was saying, you can see all the cattle there, cows. But it's a, it's a nice stretch. It's a, not your usual squared off, walled in farmer's fields. It's As you can see, it's more of a more of a sort of meadow or a, a dale or something like that, you know. And you've got your cattle just roaming free, which it's nice to see. So yeah, we just uh, nice steady walking, nice and steady underfoot, soft under underfoot on grass, following this river called Hill that's winding its way along through countryside. Lovely walking. I don't know if you can see that place up there. If you can make it out, that's called Bishop's Palace, that. And there's a, a little plaque here, that tells you to, I don't want to read it all, but a Bishop's Palace, the first record in the long history of Rose Castle, so it's actually called Rose Castle, and it was a gift of the land by King Henry III to Bishop Walter. McClerk in 1230. Wow, so that's 13th century, that, that's some years old. And it has been the principal residence of the bishops, bishops of Carlisle ever since. So they've been living in some uh, luxury, haven't they? The Bishops of Carlisle for quite a few hundred years. That's a, it's a lovely looking place, that's for sure. Better view of that from here. It's a right pad that. No wonder they call it the Bishop's Palace. Right spot. So you can sort to see from here a good, a good view at a distance we've done. Them two hills on the horizon, one up left is Carrick Fell. And that's High Pike, and you can see all that countryside that we've come across. So I've put some miles in today. So we've just arrived at Bridge End, or Bridge End is just back over the bridge just there. But there's no shop there. There's a pub, there's a car garage. But we want to shop, because we're going to get a little bit of something to eat. A little pasty or something like that, maybe a chocolate bar. A quick uh, booster and energy drink or something like that. So what we're doing is, we're carrying on to Dalston now. There's a co-op in Dalston. And then from Dalston, is the last push and that is the place where we need to decide also what route we're taking and I think we might be walking the four mile on the road but look on it but we'll see when we get there so this is Dalston quick refuel sandwich and a good old fashioned Cornish pasty from Co-op. So we're going to have 10-15 minutes here and then it is the last leg into Carlisle and it's done, completed. Right then, refueled. Feel a little bit better now, I've got a bit of food and drink in me again. I'm going to carry on down here, we've got about four miles to do now. We're hoping 
top side of Cummersdale we might be able to get back across to actual route above where the closed off section is this is the point where just back down there it's uh, it is actually closed off the route up to just below Cummersdale I think so once we get to Cummersdale we're gonna cut back across get back on route follow the river up and finish it on the actual proper finish point well look at that then yeah finally finally back on the Cumbria way back along the meandering river Caldo that makes its way into Carlisle and that has been a pretty non-eventful boring walk along that road I think we've probably done about two two and a half mile there on a might, might have even been three mile along that road there uh, no path, footpaths in places so we've had to sort of walk it edge of road along uh, high speed road as well so that has just been get head down slog it out get it done but we're finally back on the trail so we've literally got about a mile to do and we're there so what I'm gonna do I'll fetch you back when we hit the finish point which we've been led to believe is the visitor centre but apparently there's a book to sign so I will see you there very shortly Completed Cumbria away five days. Don't know what mileage is. We're gonna have done about 80 miles, I should imagine. This is the visitor centre, it's sort of the official end, there's a book in there to sign, me and Paul have just been in there, signed it, congratulated each other, that's been an absolute blast that, really enjoyed it, we've uh, seen some stunning scenery, mountains, hills, countryside, met some fabulous people, stopped at some cracking campsites a long way, that's been really good, I'm really, really feeling good about it, really, really felt strong these last couple of days, but that's it, I'm not going to Lab on too much well, that is it the Cumbria way completed I hope you've enjoyed coming along we've certainly enjoyed the journey so thanks for watching as always stay safe out there and we'll catch you on next time